Betting on Florida's future, Governor Ron DeSantis has reached a deal with the Seminole Tribe of Florida to bring sports betting to the Sunshine State. The legislature will hold a special session next month to consider the deal. The governor says that could bring in billions of dollars into our state, but critics say any deal should have included your vote. Nighttime's Angelina Salcedo is digging deeper into what this means for you. All right. It's a historic deal years in the making. This is the agreement. Governor Ron DeSantis and the chairman of the Seminole Tribe putting their pens to paper, signing an agreement that could make sports betting legal in Florida. It's going on anyways. People are doing it. They have things that go overseas. Uh, and this agreement makes the tribe uh, the, the sole provider of that um, on tribal lands, the servers. The governor says the deal would bring in at least $6 billion through 2030. Under the compact, statewide online sports betting would be legal, and more games like craps and roulette would be added to Seminole Tribe casinos. We are truly happy for the, uh, for the chance that we've been given to be here today and put this behind us for the next 30 years. But the proposal is being met with opposition. The problem is that it's the biggest expansion of casino gambling in Florida history. John Sawinski is the president of No Casinos. The group has been against the expansion of gambling in the state for years. If you look at sports betting, there will be more advertising for it, and which will drive more people to bet illegally. Sawinski also says the pact violates the voter control of gambling amendment that was passed in 2018. This agreement paves the way for full scale um, electronic betting of all sorts on phones and electronic devices and mobile devices throughout Florida, not just on tribal lands. But Governor DeSantis says that argument won't stick, saying the agreement meets requirements. Clearly, the amendment recognized the ability of the governor to negotiate with, with the tribe. Look, at the end of the day, this is operated by the tribe. It's operated on tribal lands. And, uh, and I think it, I think it satisfies uh, Amendment 3. And if somebody wants to uh, try to contest that, both the tribe and the state will be, will be vigorously defending the agreement that, that we have uh, made here today. If this deal is passed by the legislature, it will need federal approval. It could start as early as the fall and would end in July of 2051. Okay, so how on earth did we get here? Well, sports betting actually became legal in 2018 when the Supreme Court struck down the 1992 Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act, allowing states to legalize it at their choosing. Prior to that, only Nevada had an exemption. Fast forward to now, all the major sports leagues now have betting partnerships. And DraftKings and FanDuel, two massive mobile sports books, pulled in a combined $1.5 billion last year during a pandemic, mind you. Now, almost three years since that law was struck down, over half of the U.S. has legalized sports gambling. It's up and running in 21 states plus D.C. New York was actually the most recent to pass a bill on it. Six others have made it legal, but it is not operational in those states just yet. And finally, so how much money are we talking is at stake here? Well, here's the revenue since June of 2018 to now by state. New Jersey pulled in nearly $1 billion in revenue. That's more than Nevada and Las Vegas. Pennsylvania is third with over half a billion. Overall, the 21 states where it is legal have pocketed a combined three and a half billion dollars in revenue in less than three years.